Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video at my YouTube channel and blog. Today I have two cards for you made using layered stencils. One card uses some stencils that are meant to be layered and the other is my own personal combination of two different stencils. In fact, they're from two different companies. I'm going to be using some gold ink on these and also some gold accents and I think it, it makes them have a really bold and striking design. This is the first card I'm working on. It has a black background with stenciling on top, and I love this argyle pattern that's created with some stencils from Newton's Nook. The black cardstock I'm using today is actually from Gina K Designs. This is the black onyx cardstock, and it's going to cover the entire front of my card. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this down to a card size. So it's five and a half by four and one quarter. Like I mentioned before, I'm using some stencils from Newton's Nook. This is the Argyle stencil, and it's a set of two stencils that are meant to be layered on top of each other. I'm going to start with the diamond pattern, the full diamond pattern stencil first, to lay down some solid color. And I want to go completely off the edge of this cardstock, so I'm going to actually tape it from behind. I'm going to tape the cardstock to the stencil so that it doesn't move around as I add ink on top. And this makes it so that I don't have any areas of the front of the cardstock being covered by tape. So I'm going to go ahead and start stenciling. I'm using some peacock feathers to stress oxide ink. And oxides are great on top of dark cardstock because it shows up. So oxide ink is a little bit like a hybrid pigment ink and pigment inks don't soak into the paper and dye the paper underneath. That's why they're not called dye inks, they're called pigments because the pigments sit up on top of the paper. And so the color isn't absorbed and you actually can get color on top of dark surfaces. So I'm really swirling this mini round blending tool with the Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Ink. I'm pressing that into the stencil. I wanna make sure I get all those corners and then I can lift up that stencil and I'm left with this cool diamond pattern. Doesn't quite look like it's argyle yet, just looks like a diamond pattern. And because I'm going to be putting some ink on top of this, I want to make sure it's dry. So I used my heat tool just to speed up the drying process. Um, oxide inks don't take quite as long as uh, traditional pigment inks to dry, but they do take a little bit longer than dye inks. And I wanted to show you this stencil. It has this kind of faint cut of where the other diamond should be. And that helps you line up the stencil on top so that everything is precise and perfect. So I did use that, those guides on the other stencil to make sure that I had it in the right spot. I'm now using some Enchanted Gold Pigment Ink from Alta New. This is one of their new ink pads that I think they've introduced in the last month or two. And I'm picking it up with the mini round blending tool and pressing it into these little dashed lines on this stencil. Now, this ink is very vibrant and very bright. The packaging looks suspiciously like Sukaneko Delicata ink, so I don't know if it's the same, just repackaged or not. All I know is this ink is pretty fabulous. It's pretty great, it's nice and juicy, and I get a really good result with this ink. You'll be able to see it in a couple applications in this video. In this first one, I've got it in very small sections, pressed and um, push into those small areas on the stencil and then later I'll be showing it to you with stripes. So I love how vibrant this enchanted gold ink is on top. So here's the example of the stripes. I'm going to move on to the second card uh, stenciling and you'll notice that it looks like this gold ink is on top of the black flowers although I did it the other way around. I'm using the white stripe stencil from Pretty Pink Posh and I'm going to tape it to some white cardstock this time. This cardstock is cut to a standard size card as well. Now this stencil is just not quite tall enough, like the stripes aren't tall enough to completely go from edge to edge. So because of that, I know that I will be cutting down this design later because I want this pattern to go all the way to the edge. Although when I decided to start adding the gold to the stripes, I had it fade out to one end. So if I was to do this card again, or if you want to make this card, go ahead and just move that stencil to slide it down so that the bottom goes off the edge of the cardstock. And then as you fade it up to the top, you won't even see that top edge. And it won't even matter that the stripes aren't tall enough. So I'm pressing my foam tool into the bottom of the stripes and then blending up and I'm making sure that I'm not blending side to side because that would move the stripe stencil. 
all right, I'm going to heat set this or rather just speed up the drying process so that I can uh, do more stenciling on top. I want to make sure that as I add more color on top of this, that it's not going to mix with the gold ink below. Okay, so now I'm going to try a new product for me. I'm going to be using um, some pixie spray from ThermoWeb. I've got the bouquet of roses stencil from Simon inside of a box here just to contain the spray. And then I'm adding this pixie spray to the back of my stencil or whatever side of, of the stencil you'd like. Let that sit for about a minute and it makes the back of the stencil, stencil just ever so slightly tacky so that as you place it onto your project, it stays in place. So I'm going to place this bouquet of roses stencil right over the top of my gold striped stenciling. And once I have it down, I can press it and it stays in place while I add some additional tape. Now I'm using some purple tape from ThermoWeb today. This is the actually the first time I've ever used purple tape and I really, really like how it works. I've been a big fan of my traditional blue painter's tape for a long time, but I noticed that when I was taping onto regular cardstock, um, like this white paper here, that sometimes it was almost too tacky. So this purple tape has just a little bit less stick, just enough for your projects. And I've really enjoyed the wider thickness of this one inch tape, or I think it's actually one and a quarter or one and a half. I'm not sure, it's pretty wide. I started by using some black soot distress oxide ink, but then I realized that it wasn't going to get as black and deep and solid as I was really envisioning over top of this gold stripe background. So I just decided to switch that out and use some additional Altenew pigment ink. I'm now using obsidian ink, and this is a super black ink. Um, it stamps really well actually too. I noticed that later on in the video when I was working on an, a greeting for one of these cards, but it stamps really well. So when I'm doing stenciling with this pigment ink, I wanna make sure it's as black and as solid as possible. So I'm doing sort of a stamping up and down motion when I first add it to the design, and then I swirl around a little bit to get it in all of those corners. So I'm finishing up all of those flowers and I wanna make sure I get every single corner and all of these leaves and on the flower petals. So I'm going over the area a few different times. And then it was time to remove the stencil. And I've always said this, this is kind of like Christmas morning when you take the stencil off because you don't really know how it looks until this very moment. So I'm going to lift this up and you'll be able to see a really crisp black design of roses and leaves. Now, right now it's really covering up those gold stripes. You can only see it very faintly, but as it dries, it, the black settles into the paper a little bit more and you start to see the stripes even more. So um, just be aware that this gold ink does kind of sit on top of other inks, even if the other inks were applied afterward. I'm now using the A2 Layers die set from Waffle Flower, and I recently received this. Um, Nina over at Waffle Flower sent it to me, and I am in love. I never thought I would need some A2 Layer dies because I'm like, why do I need them? I can cut my own paper myself, but they actually come lot. They come in handy a lot. So I'm using some some of that the same black cardstock from Gina K Designs, and I scored that to be a standard size card. And now I've taken the big thanks dies from Simon's stamp, and I cut out the two pieces. The word is out of some gold foil cardstock from Altenew, and then the black is that same Gina K Designs black cardstock. I used a glue sponge to put some adhesive on the back of that thanks, and then pressed it down onto the outer layer. So this black cardstock, it's a little bit off screen, but you can see how I cover it up with a, an acrylic block to add a little bit of weight. So it holds that those two dies together while they dry. Now using the Big Thanks Words stamp set from Simon's Stamp, and I'm going to use a really itty bitty line of text and that same obsidian ink from Altenew. And you can see how crisp this ink is. And I'm not even using a stamp positioning tool. I'm just using an acrylic block and being very careful as I stamp and I get a very sharp and crisp image. I took that Argyle background and I adhered it to the black card card base, um, just using some Tombow Extreme Adhesive. And then I put little tiny squares of Darice Foam Adhesive on the back of that word, just in a few different places. I used my T-square ruler to position that just perfectly. And then I put some additional foam tape on the back of that greeting strip. And I just trimmed that out with some scissors. 
So this card is almost done. I'm going to come back and add a frame. I wanted a little more gold on it. So I'm using those same A2 layers dies that I used before when I was cutting out the striped background. And I'm layering two of them inside of each other. So this is going to cut out a really thin frame. And I'll just run that through my die cutting machine. And then I put some connect glue on the back of the frame and then directly onto my card. Now I like using liquid glue for things like this because it gives you a little bit of time to wiggle the die around and get it in the right position. So when I first placed this down, that bottom corner wasn't where I wanted it and I was able to kind of wiggle it just a little bit until it was in the spot exactly where I wanted it. Then I pressed down and it's adhered perfectly. So I'm going to go back to the striped background here and I'm going to finish that card up. I'm using the Tiny Words stamp set from Simon Says Stamp and I'm going to stamp this greeting onto some black cardstock and then heat emboss it. So I'm using a powder tool to prevent any stray embossing powder and then I'm stamping that greeting in a Versamark ink. I'm just using an acrylic block for this and I'm stamping it a little bit away from the edge of the cardstock because I plan to use a die to cut out this greeting. I'm adding some Brutus Monroe alabaster embossing powder on top and this is a nice bright white embossing powder. So I'll sprinkle that on, shake off the excess, and then tap it so that it gets rid of any powder. I'll hit that with my heat tool until everything is smooth and melted. And then I took the nested banners dies from Simon Says Stamp and then the very, very smallest banner um, with the V-shaped ends, I put over the top of my greeting here using some micro pour tape just to hold it in place and then ran that through my die cutting machine. Now using some foam tape to adhere my striped pattern to my black card base. And then I put a little bit of that Darice foam tape right behind my die cut banner. And I love how this die cut banner looks. It's so small and dainty. Use that same ruler to help me get it positioned just right. And then those are the two cards for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. These are really fun backgrounds to create using some layered gold stenciling. Um, I could go on and on using this ink. I think that Enchanted Gold Ink from Altenew is just fantastic. And paired with the Altenew Gold Foil cardstock, can't be beat. Thanks so much for watching today. I will be back soon with another card video. In fact, we've got brand new stamps and dies from Simon Says Stamp coming out this week as well as Waffle Flower. So I'm hoping to show you some of that this week. Thanks for stopping by. I've got two more videos or actually three videos for you on screen to check out some additional ideas for stencils on your card designs.